The teenage brain gets a lot of bad press. Some say it's wired to take risks, prone for bad influences, or vulnerable to stress. But on the flip side, it is thirsty for exploration, learning, and social relationships. Now, you may ask, why invite a dementia specialist to speak about the teenage brain? Well, there might be a connection between what happens in your teenage years and what may happen much later in life. The child's brain is like a sponge, observing information without organizing it. When you are three years old, you have up to 160 billion brain cells and neurons and their connections. The teenage brain, and the teenage years actually extend into your mid-20s, is all about efficiency, organizing information and experiences. The grown-up brain, or the adult brain, continues to become more complex on its way to eventual wisdom. So, how does the teenage brain become such an effective thinking machine? Well, there are three processes that are occurring in your teenage brain right now. The first is pruning. If you've ever had a landscaping job, or you like to work in your own garden, then you'd know that in order for your plants to thrive, you've got to prune. Scientists are not fully sure how this is exactly done, and they were baffled when they observed it in the lab. But however it happens, the brain seems to reduce the number of brain cells, or neurons and their connections, by half. And by that, actually, making the brain more efficient. The pruning process is normal, natural, it's genetic. The brain reduces the number of cells, and it works faster and better, more efficiently. By the end of your teenage years, when the pruning process is over, you are down to 86 billion brain cells or neurons and their connections. Sometimes in life, less is more. The next process is myelination. That's a tough one to pronounce, I'll repeat it. Myelination. The brain cell connections are wrapped in insulation called myelin. That helps with the brain cells to communicate faster and more efficiently. When brain cells are fully myelinated, they can communicate up to 3,000 times faster. That's the 5G of the brain. Right now in your brain, Various regions are undergoing a major insulation job, or upgrade, if you will. Finally, there is sprouting. Unfortunately, brain cells cannot multiply anymore in the teenage brain. But brain cell connections, or synapses, can. Every brain cell has from hundreds to thousands of connections or synapses, and in many ways, the number is up to you. Through learning, exploration, and problem solving, brain cells sprout new brain connections all the time. This happens throughout our lives in children, teenagers, and adults too, but it most dramatically happens during your teenage years. In other words, right in here, right now. So, your teenage brain now is undergoing more pruning, myelination, and sprouting than in any other time during your life. But there is also something very special about the way it happens. Various parts of your brain undergo pruning, myelination, and sprouting at different paces and at a different time. Not all the parts of the brain develop at once. There are many areas and regions of the brain, but I would like to mention two important ones. In the teenage brain, the limbic system and the motivation system in charge of emotions, feelings, and motivation, the way you feel good when you get a reward, undergoes pruning, myelination, and sprouting at a faster rate compared to other parts. The limbic system is also more active and more responsive during your teenage years. 
Another important area, the prefrontal cortex, an area of the brain in charge of logic, planning, decision-making, and impulse control, undergoes pruning, myelination, and sprouting at a slower rate compared to other parts. That's okay, and it's normal. When your prefrontal cortex completes its development in your mid-20s, that is when your teenage years officially, neurologically, end. So, that explains the adults in your life regularly pointing out your impulsivity or complaining about all the drama at home. But it is completely normal to reflect at your age and to realize that preferring to be social, taking risks, and exploring the world is because that is how your brain is currently wired. You are in a unique time in your life. In a decade, the changes will be all completed. Can you use that to your advantage? Yes, because not only is the teenage brain changing, the world is changing. Let us take a look at the very big picture using your teenage brain. Humankind is changing dramatically, and at this very time, exponentially. Technology, science, social norms, the workplace, economy are all in a constant state of change. You will be in the middle of your career in 2050, 2060. What will the world look like in 30 to 40 years? Not to mention in the year 2100. You'll probably still be around and perhaps even active and busy. So what will the future hold? We just don't know. Humans have never been able to answer that question, but it might have been easier in the past. Let's jump back a thousand years. In the year 1022, a teenager would learn the ropes from his or her master or family member and usually do the same thing they did, such as raise a family or work on a farm or church or army. Technology and skills did not change that much in the time span of 30 to 40 years. Even 200 years ago, in 1822, most teenagers did not go to school. They did not have resources, such as internet, smartphones, television, radio. And most of their educational texts, uh, most of their educational resources came from religious texts. Today, in the year 2022, much of what you might be learning now might be completely irrelevant in the year 2050. Science, medicine, social norms, economy, the workplace might be completely different in 30 to 40 years. You folks are flooded with information. The internet, online courses, and hey, TED Talks. So the question is, what should we fill your teenage brain with in school? More information, or how about something else? The key is to make sense of it all. To identify what is important and what is not important. To combine all the bits of info into the big picture. Here it comes, folks. How to use and take advantage of your teenage, sprouting, myelinating, and pruning brain. But first, let's understand the adult brain, that of your parents and teachers. They have completed their pruning and myelination. And with time, they may even start the process of demyelination um, with the age-related changes of cell loss and plaque formation. So on the other hand, the adult brain definitely continues to sprout new brain connections all the time. 
and it continues to grow just in a different way. They are accumulating wisdom, super efficient pathways, systems to figure it out based on experience, which comes only with time. So, your adults and teachers are wiser, but don't rely on adults too much. They mean well, but they don't always get it in the year 2022. Most of your teachers, and me included, were educated 30, 40, and 50 years ago, and the pace of change is just too fast for them and me. Their brains are wired based on 1980s and 1990s education systems and culture. And their brain is aligned and set to that time. So, you need to figure out what makes you tick, how you are wired on your own. One of, the f one of my favorite scenes from the movie The Matrix involves Neo going to visit the Oracle. Neo has to figure out if he is the one or not the one. Above the oracle's door was a sign with a printed saying in Latin, temet nosce. Know yourself, the oldest advice in the book. Life is about figuring out who you are in psychology or figuring out the level of pruning, myelination, and sprouting in your brain in neurology. Or technologically speaking, get to know your operating system. That is very important. Why? Because Google, Amazon, TikTok, and several governments around the world are trying to do that too. They are not interested in your smartphone. They are trying to figure out how you operate. Enhance various pathways and optimize your pruning and myelination. How? The concept of optimizing brain circuitry is partially genetic, but it is also, in many ways, up to you. So, use it or lose it. There's an expression. Spend 100 hours to know something well, 1,000 hours to become an expert, and 10,000 hours to become a master. Start doing it today. Now, and you will set your brain circuitry for a lifetime, establishing systems that in many ways will determine what your brain likes to do. Enhance pathways by trying out many different things from the arts and science, topics out of your comfort zone, all to enhance pruning, myelination, and sprouting. Don't forget to get enough sleep. Sleep is when your brain is flushed and cleansed, essential for development, pruning, myelination, and sprouting. The slow wave sleep between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is the most efficient time to flush your and cleanse your brain. I challenge you, I double dare you to sleep from 10 to 2 every night and more, if you will. Think about stress reduction good nutrition and exercise, and um, continue, avoid toxic substances and limit screen time, all in an attempt to minimize uh, negative effects on pruning, myelination, and sprouting. Demand from your parents and teachers to educate you about emotional intelligence the connections between the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. Master mental resilience, because it might be very stressful in the future. And learn all about collaboration skills, communication skills, cooperation skills, and creativity. And then, when your pruning and myelination is all over in your mid-twenties. You will be then all set for a lifelong journey into your passion with lifelong sprouting of new brain connections. Get ready 
to learn and then relearn everything again and again and again. Temet noske. Thank you.